Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, Shudji. I'd like to welcome all the people on the stage and every single one of you in this room. Okay. I'd like to welcome every single one of you in this room. You know, many years ago, Sam, Sam came to India and he told you, he told you the story of Indra Gandhi ji listening to his presentation. I think, Sam, it was 1982? 1979. I think you came again in 1982. So he came in 82. And I was 12 years old. And in the morning, my father told me that there's a presentation. And you have to come. I didn't know what presentation meant. I thought I was going to get a present. <laughs> anyway. I went there, and my sister and me were made to sit down in the back of the room quietly. And we sat there for six hours. And Sam and my father discussed computers. I didn't quite understand what a computer was. Nobody actually in 1982 really understood what a computer was. To me, it looked like a little box with a TV screen on it. And frankly, I didn't like that presentation because as a little kid, I just couldn't stand the fact that I had to sit there for six hours. And four or five years later, I started to see the result of that presentation. There were typewriters in the prime minister's office. And everybody wanted to use a typewriter. And Sam and my father said to the prime minister's office that we have to move to computers. And everybody said, no, we like our typewriters. We don't want computers. So in Sam and maybe my father's typical style, they said, fine, you can keep your typewriters. But what we are going to do is we are going to replace them with computers for one month. And after one month, we will give you your typewriters back. They gave them the computers for one month. And then after one month, they said, OK, now we are bringing your typewriters back. And everybody started to fight. No, we don't want our typewriters back. We want the computer. <laughs> ideas, ideas take time to travel into India. But when an idea is good, India understands it very quickly and uses it and shows the world how it can be used. I've been talking to Sam and I made a point to him in the car and he said, oh, I had never thought about that. You're all non-resident Indians. The Congress movement the original Congress movement was an NRI movement. Mahatma Gandhi was an NRI. Jawaharlal Nehru came back from England. Ambedkar, Azad, Patel, these were all, these were all NRIs. Every single one of them went to the outside world, saw the outside world, returned back to India and used some of the ideas that they had in, that they had got and transformed India. I'll, I'll go even further. The biggest success in India, our friends in the BJP say nothing happened, but our bigger, one of the biggest successes in India the milk that most of India drinks. It was a man called Mr. Kurian. He was an NRI. 
He came back from the United States and he transformed India. Sam is another example. And there are thousands and thousands of examples that we have not recognized. So before I even get into the depth of my speech, I want to tell you that I went from San Francisco to Los Angeles, to Washington, to New York. I addressed people in Berkeley, in Princeton. And wherever I went, you made me feel proud to be an Indian. Your, everywhere you look in this country, everywhere you look in this country, there is an Indian person working for America, working for India, living peacefully and building this country and our country at home. So I would like to start by, by telling you that you are actually the backbone of our country. Some people view India as a geographical construct. They view India as a piece of land. I don't view India as a piece of land. I view India as a set of ideas. So for me, anybody who has the ideas that make up India is an Indian. We have many religions in our country. We have many different languages in our country. Every single one of them lives happily together. And the reason they have been able to do so are the ideas of the Congress party. Sam Petroda, Sam Petroda just said, Sam Petroda just said that the Congress is 130 years old. Yes, it is true. The Congress organization is slightly more than a century old. But the Congress idea in India is thousands of years old. <laughs> Sam, we don't represent, we don't represent an organization. We represent a philosophy that is thousands and thousands of years old. And I'll tell you a little bit about what that philosophy is. What did Gandhiji actually fight for? What was our freedom movement about? What did Mr. Kurian do? What did Sam Petroda do? And what do thousands of NRIs do? They stand up for the truth. It doesn't matter what is standing against them. When they believe in something and they are convinced that that is the truth, they stand up for it and they pay the price for it. That is the Congress idea. I had a lot of conversations in my trip. I met a lot of people in the administration. I met people from both Democratic and Republican parties. I met many friends, NRI friends. And I must tell you, I was very surprised. Because before I could even tell them what I was feeling, before I could even tell them what I was worried about, they told me exactly the same thing. And the single biggest thing most people told me what has happened to the tolerance that used to prevail in India? What 
what has happened to the harmony in india there are a couple of challenges that india is facing the single biggest challenge and i'll give it to you in numbers 30000 youngsters come into the job market every single day that means within 24 hours 30000 new indian youngsters come into the job market today 450 of them are getting a job i'm not even talking about the unemployed i am saying that every single day 30000 new people come in and only 450 of them get a job this is the biggest challenge in front of our country and this challenge is going to be addressed by building a unified approach by bringing people together and addressing this problem we discuss everything in india there is a divisive politics going on in india but the real challenge facing india is out of 30000 new youngsters coming in 450 are getting a job you can imagine as this process continues what the result will be india simply cannot give its youngsters a vision if it is unable to give them a job the congress party has a vision to solve this problem and i will tell you a little bit about this vision currently the entire focus is on 50 or 60 really large companies we believe that if you are to create millions and millions of jobs in india it has to be done by empowering small and medium businesses it has to be done by empowering in- entrepreneurs <laughs> second i'll give you another number 40% of india's vegetables rot agriculture can simply not be ignored there are people from punjab here you will understand yeah there you are you will understand exactly what i am saying agriculture is a strategic asset we need to build agriculture we need to develop a cold chain we need to put food processing plants near farms and we need to empower indian agriculture we can get millions of jobs if we empower our farmers <laughs> healthcare is going to transform and i said this in my speech in berkeley today all the information in healthcare is in the doctor's memories tomorrow all that information is going to be on computers india has the world's second biggest population we do very large numbers of surgeries heart surgeries eye surgeries we have a great understanding of how to do these things there is a huge opportunity for india in healthcare we can become the healthcare center of the world but we have to plan for it we have to plan for it we have to plan for it today and i'm not talking about simply health tourism i'm talking about constructing a system whereby in the future large parts of medical processes are carried out in our country I can give you a similar vision for the IITs. I went to Berkeley. I was in Princeton yesterday. American universities 
are networks, they are knowledge networks. Information travels within them, they are connected to businesses, they are connected to the economy. Our IITs are tremendous institutions, but they are not networks. If we connect our IITs to our industry, if we connect our IIT, IITs to businesses across the world, they will start to compete with the best institutions in the world. These are things that can be done. These are things that can be done. But I want to go back to the beginning of my speech. You need to get involved. You have tremendous knowledge. You have tremendous understanding. You work in different fields. I want to invite you to come and work with the Congress party to discuss the vision going forward. We want to take your help. We want to take your help. And look, Sam Petroda single-handedly transformed the telecom industry. We don't want one Sam Petroda. We want at least, we want at least 10 to 15 Sam Petrodas because there's a lot of work to be done in India. The last thing I'd like to say to you, India has always shown the world how to live in harmony. For thousands of years, India has had a reputation of peace and harmony. This is being challenged. There are forces in our country that are dividing the country. And it is very dangerous for the country. And it ruins our reputation abroad. Many, many people in the Democratic Party, in the Republican Party asked me, what is going on in your country? We always believed that your country work together. We always believed that your country was peaceful. What is going on in your country? And that is something that we have to fight. India's reputation, India's reputation in the world, India's reputation in the world is very important. The world is transforming and people are looking towards us. China is rising. We have a relationship with the United States. Many countries in a violent world are looking towards India and saying, maybe India has the answer for the 21st century. Maybe India has the answer for peaceful coexistence in the 21st century. So we cannot afford, we cannot afford to lose our most powerful asset. Our most powerful asset is that 1.3 billion people lived happily, non-violently, peacefully. And the world respected us for that. And this is something that as Congress people, every single one of us has to defend. India is a country that belongs to all its people. Doesn't matter who they are. I can see my Sikh brothers. I can see people from different states. India does not belong to any one of you. India belongs to this entire room. India belongs to every single one of us. And that is what the Congress Party is. Again, I'd like to thank you very much. And I've told Sam, Sam, whenever you want me to come to the United States, whenever you want me to come anywhere, just call me. Main hazir ho jaunga. <laughs> and final thing, the final thing I told Sam today, I told Sam today, he said about the photographs. And I've learned something. Sam, our individual photographs are So, 
I think next time we will give a decent amount of time so that we can have selfies or photographs together. Thank you very much. All the best.